Hi everybody, I am Natasha Lane from the Netherlands and welcome to an interview with the Dutch death metal band Pestilence. And we're here with the one and only who makes the music of Pestilence and is the guitarist and singer of Pestilence, Patrick Mameli. And their ninth album is going to be out the 25th of June on Egonia Records. So, hi Patrick. Hi, how are you doing? Yes, good. Yeah, very sunny here. How are you? Very sunny here as well, so I'm very happy. I always like it when the sun is shining. It's way better than when it's raining and when it's cold. But this is what you get in, in the Netherlands. It's always way up high or really low. So I'm really enjoying the, the weather. So uh, And it's also funny that we are speaking in English since we are both Dutch, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah, for the international viewers, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a challenge for both of us. Yeah, yeah, my English is like 90% or something. Yours? Well, yeah, I guess I, it's I guess it's pretty okay since I've lived in the states for uh, I think seven or eight months. Oh, yeah. Well, yes. I lived in Florida, so uh, but this is like uh, way back, way back, and you know since it's an international language and um, you know the music, uh, the the lyrics is in English, so I guess uh, I don't have an an English accent, more more American accent. That I I figured out myself already. Okay, okay, nice. Yeah, you have fans all over the world, so it's better to do it in English, right? Yes, definitely. Yes. And uh, by the way, nice uh, t-shirts that you are wearing. I was just going to say the same to you. Very yeah. nice surprise. <laughs> Looks it's very good on you as well. A, yes, it's such a coincidence, right? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yes. You must be brother and sister then, isn't it? Yes, we are uh, twins uh, today. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, let's go to the first question if you're ready. Yep. Uh, last Friday you were back on stage again for a live stream in Den Haag. How was that for you and how did it went with playing the new songs live for the first time and so on? Uh, it was it was a it was a huge challenge for us, you know, since we haven't played in such a long time. Uh, although the band practices maybe uh, you know maybe four times a month. Uh, before we never practiced, but four times a month is already a lot for me. So th this was this was good. Uh, on the other hand, it felt like um, uh, like um, how do you call it? A solicitatie gesprek. <laughs> <laughs> It felt like going to a job interview, really, because um, there is no audience um, and you just have to focus on your playing. Um, the live stream is being followed by fans all over the world. Uh, so it's kind of a it, detachment from reality, really. It's very difficult to stay focused because normally after a song, the crowd goes wild. Uh, but this time there was like nothing, just like like very clinical. Um, the fans loved it, uh, but for me personally, I kind of disliked it because because of the spontaneity is, is not there. And also, the mm -hmm. we had the air conditioning, the AC was blown because it was warm as well. I, it was blown really hard and the dry air was killing my voice and the hands were really clamped so you couldn't really play your instrument. So, okay. but that's just like, um, um, I guess in retrospect, when you talk about it, um, th these were the things that I kind of didn't like about it. And I hopefully uh, we're never going to have to do a live stream again because I really want to play live in front of an audience and, 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 meet, and meet beautiful people such as yourself. Yeah, yeah, that's much better. Yeah, do yeah. You know many people watch the live stream. Yes, I think um, I haven't had the official numbers, but um, they came from all over the world. So it was from South America, um, America. Uh, you had some from Japan even. Of course, a lot of people from, from the Netherlands. 
and uh, you know some close friends as well. So everybody was very excited. My son, uh, who is on Ibiza, Ibiza right now, uh, he even followed it. And and afterwards, he called me saying he was very proud of his dad. So that must have been pretty cool, I guess. Oh, that's right? so sweet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was of course there also. I watched the live stream also. Yeah, I saw I saw your comment, and uh, so um, yeah. For me, you know, I'm very always very self-aware and self-critical about everything. Where other people uh, really did enjoy enjoyed it because you know the sound was really good, and probably because of the sound was really good, you could hear the many mistakes. At least I did. Mm. Well, it sounded uh, really good to me. So, and it's really nice to hear the new songs live. You know. Yeah, I think that 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 was a good intro introduction. Yeah. Um, the new album because I think that we I think we had in the pre-sale now uh, about ten thousand copies already sold, and the fans have heard two songs, yeah. which is crazy. The people have um, a lot of trust uh, in my my musical capabilities and my composing skills, and in the band. Uh, th this new lineup deserves um, you know to be really upfront. And uh, you know, and 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 shining a lot because these guys are really awesome. So it was a nice uh, way of showing the guys um, of the fans a couple of more songs. So we played four new songs, and uh, I hope everybody enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And you traveled to Falkenburg in Limburg uh, for the photo shoot of the new album. And that's the place you also recorded the Land of Tears music video uh, back in the day, right? Yes, definitely. This was a very strange, uh, strange feeling to just go back to that place because uh, in my head, uh, it, it felt much bigger. So when I came back uh, there to do the photo shoot, I was like, wow, this is not so big at all. I mean, it's like, you know, it's, I, I remember from, from being a little kid, and then uh, you look up to something and it's really huge and then you go back and it's like, oh, it's not big at all. So mm -hmm. I had the same kind of feeling. It was not that big, but it, it, uh, the, the special moments really came back because, yeah, we did record our, 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 our video clip there. And uh, uh, this was our first official clip and um, everybody seemed to enjoy that clip very much. So, so it, was, it was great to go back uh, there. And um, I guess all the uh, all the people that worked there when we did the video, they're not there anymore. You know, it is all new people, youngsters, and they didn't know who we were and everything. So, but we got a nice uh, guide with us so we could just go uh, and look around a little bit. It was very nice to go back there. Yeah, it's very beautiful there in uh, Falkenburg in Limburg. Yeah. Yes, yes, I I, I love it. So uh, it was great. It was great to to go back there and. Uh, see all the wall paintings and stuff like that. So we, where we had the drum kit, um, um, where we had the drum kit posted uh, back then, um, we, we, we stood and did the, you know, the official uh, band pick there. It was so awesome. So it's just great, great. And there was just not so many people that, that, that thought it was Falkenburg actually. Okay. You know, some people did see the video. Uh, I guess a lot of people saw the video, but they did not, realize it, that we went there again to do it some some person even said oh it's probably in poland because uh you know the the new video clip you know was, was done by the guys in poland so but good you noticed yeah nice to bring something back from the past in now yeah yeah definitely normally yeah. i yeah, yeah. go <laughs> Normally, I never look back too too much, but be, but I thought that was such a special place, this place uh, you know, that I really wanted to go back there to do, to do the uh, to do the shots and have maybe like a you know little trip down memory lane when yeah. we were young and I was having long hair still. Yes, well, you still have hair, right? Just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you have beautiful hair. Beautiful. I wish I had your hair. Ah, uh, yeah, curly <laughs> for today. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, was it in the caves of uh, Falkenberg or? Yes, I was. I think it was in the main cave. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, but like I said, I, it, it was not. It, it was not as huge as I, I I picture it to be. So um, um, it just it just it just fitted enough for the band and 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 the people that you know were were in there to, to you know to guide us and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. And will the pictures be in the booklets of the new album? 
Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah, I guess not too many people have seen, uh, of course, the artwork because it's not being released yet. Um, but some of the pictures have been um, have been online already, so they're going to be uh, represented in the booklet. Yeah, it's nice. And you have Rutger, Joost, and Michiel in the band now. How is it so far to work with them? And did they make some of the music and or riffs for the new album? Um, well, as you might know, um, I've always composed the music for Pestilence, and this is not, a, you know, it's it's not a secret uh, that I've still uh, done the lyrics and 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 uh, and the music for this album as well. Um, it's not like um, I'm a, a, a big dictator and telling everybody what to do, and they're not allowed to write music. But I think for for Pestilence, um, since it's my brainchild. Uh, I want to keep the style as pure as possible. That's why I don't listen to too much extreme music to begin with, because I I love to keep a clear head uh, and not you know and not being in too much like involved in what's going on. So I get um, maybe get all these ideas from these other bands that I listen to, and then I'll incorporate it into my own music. And people are going to say, oh, that sounds like Morbid Angel, or this sounds like Cannibal Corpse, or something like that. You know. I try to stay away from that um, and working with these guys uh, ha have been a blessing, really. And they know how I feel about these guys as well, because I've always had like an international lineup uh, with people from all over the world. Uh, but for this album, I just wanted to go all Dutch. And um, I, I see there is um, there is less problems with uh, language barriers and there's less problems with um Mentality, working ethics, mentality, just, just the overall Dutch, do uh, gewoon, dat doe je al gek genoeg, type of stuff, right? So just yeah. like the normal Dutch attitude towards a lot of things um, is really what I like. Um, you know, I, I've worked with all these people and I, and I think all these albums are great, but this one is really special for me because these guys live in in the Netherlands, so we can practice together, we can hang out, we can we can see each other. Even during this pandemic, we just go and see each other. So it's really it's really nice to be able to do that and not have a, a long re a musical relationship, you know, like long distance. Yeah, that's much easier. Yes, definitely. Yeah, and I, I know uh, Rutger uh, a little bit personally, and uh, yeah, he's a really great guy. Really nice uh, adding to your band, I think. Yeah, I th I think so as well because um, I noticed him. Well, I knew him before, but I noticed him when uh, when they opened up um, for Pestilence uh, as Bleeding Gods. Okay. Uh, yeah. So and I was I was watching the guy like every night. I would go and and check him out like a couple of songs, and then um, I, I find I find his energy very positive, and he's always very energetic on stage. He's always there, you know very professional so i figured you know to ask the guy if he wants to you know record the album with me and do some touring and of course he uh, not of course but yeah i guess you know uh, he really uh, loved doing that so and he knew a bunch of other people and that's how this actually came about uh, becoming an all dutch band i guess yeah nice so what was his first reaction when you asked him um n not overwhelmed he tried to keep cool but okay. on the inside on the inside i knew he was dying and he was peeing his pants that's why he probably has his depend diaper on so he could just let it go you know he was so he was so excited and so happy yeah, yeah. you know and I, and I was happy i was happy for him too to you know be able to help him out um as well because i know he's in bleeding gods but you know giving him the opportunity to play in pestles um he would broaden his horizons as well so and he's such a nice guy, so I, I would I would kindly offer that to him. Oh, that's great. Yeah, the next question of mine, you actually already answered it, but I'm gonna ask anyway. Uh, you said two years ago that you stopped listening to metal to create your own style for pestilence. Is this still the case? Uh, well, not just for two years. I've been doing it after, I think it was after testimony when I realized that um, it's not so good to be a sponge, and and I'm a sponge, and it's not just because of music, 
it, mm -hmm. it's because of everything that I'm interested in, I take it within me. And then I, I, I try to learn as much as possible about it. Uh, but with music, um, learning as much as I can about, you know, death metal or whatever extreme music it is, it, it, it is more of a hindrance because subconsciously, uh, even if you don't want to, the stuff that you really like, and this is what's a problem with a lot of death metal bands, I think, is that they, they are so much involved into the scene that they listen to so much death metal that it's yeah. hard to keep up your own style because you will take this snippet here, this snippet there, and and you're incorporated into your music and then you kind of lose your own style a little bit. So that's why I wanted to uh, stay away from that. And um, mm -hmm. some fans don't like it when I say that, uh, you know, that I don't listen to extreme music that much. You know, I, I do listen to uh, some other styles of music, but you know what I really like? Maybe I'm getting old, but I really like the sounds of nature, the okay. sounds of wind, the sounds of the birds, the sounds just of tranquility, just okay. peace and quiet. So when I compose my own music, whether it's Pestilence or whether it's Drone 187 or any other style, I already have a lot of musical information every day. So I'd rather be just have total quiet. You know, this is something that I really enjoy, just like uh, just being relaxed, you know, and people always say when I go to the gym and work out, oh, yeah, so you listen to Hate Eternal or you listen to Brutal Death Metal so you can push the weight. Now, I don't listen to anything. I try to be as focused within myself to learn whatever um, my body tells me. If I do an exercise well, my body will tell me. But if I am distracted with music or something else, it is. It's not, I, I like to be focused on what I do. Just like I'm focused on you and, and your questions right now. Yeah, that's that's yeah. great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I uh, understand. Yeah, and you recognize pestilence right away. You have your own unique own style, the pestilence sound. So maybe that's also one of the reasons. Well, that's the main reason why I, why I do that, you know, and especially uh, not having other guys in the band um, contribute to the riffing um but they can contribute in any other way a riff can contribute in its in his solos uh of course um michiel can do whatever he wants to do with the, with the, with the drumming parts mm -hmm. and of course the bass player yours he can do whatever he wants to do with the bass parts as long as it's in sync and in tune with with my riffing i'm i'm okay with everything and these guys are very professional and they have their own style and um and now they're adapting to the pestilence style, but I think they everybody enjoys very much hanging out and you know coming up with new ideas for for the new uh, the newest pestilence. <clears throat> okay, great. And I also have some personal questions in between. Uh, then we get back to the music again. Uh, can you tell us some about your tattoos? And it's also the mechanical ball, the spear of pestilence, also there. Oh, actually, I did have the um, I did have the I did have the sphere at one point. Actually, all the all the other band members did have it too. Uh, the first uh, band members, and then uh, it kind of uh, faded. You know, uh, with tattoos and the sun and all this stuff. When you get older, it it kind of so my ball was not my mechanical ball was not so good anymore, no. right? So, so I I kind of um, I put stuff over it and um covered it up but um yeah i'm not as far as as Rutger because Rutger is uh the guy in the band for the, for the tattoos like he just finished his leg he's got both arms um my newest one is right here so uh, it's it's going from I, here to there I, I got both my i got both my kids their uh initials and these are all just Japanese um, with dragon. And on my back, I have um, on my back, I have um, just a collage of all the stuff that I talk about with Pestilence. So okay. I have the um, in man manipulation we trust that logo. I have it on my back, and I have um, yeah, just a couple of bunch of other stuff. And it and you know and you know it's a really it's it's like a it's like an addiction you know uh to to get tattooed 
And the only hindrance is always the money, right? <laughs> yeah. But now um, my, my tattoo artist, who is my uh, old next door neighbor, uh, which I've known for over 30 years, uh, he, um, he offered me, uh, to, so he's going to sponsor me. So I'm getting my tattoos for free. Ooh. So so now you know I'm gonna be fully covered. <laughs> yeah, yeah maybe a new sphere then. <laughs> yeah, maybe a new sphere. Maybe we'll uh, let's see. But um, yeah, just you know, it's it all has to be with uh within the context of what you have before, you know, because I think it's very important to keep up with one style or maybe two styles. Okay. And when I was younger, I was like, oh, I want this, I want that, I want you know, you know how that goes. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. It's really an addiction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so what you got? What do oh, you have? Uh, I have some band logos. Wow. Yeah, I have um, um, Nightwish here. Yeah, uh, Lacuna nice. Coil. Uh, yeah, there are bracelets in front of it. Yeah, I really like the, um, the symphonic metal a lot, the female fronted style. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I know, I know, because, you know, I follow you, I check you, I, I know what you're... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I also love death metal, I love pestilence, of course. So, yeah, I like almost every genre of uh, metal, actually. Yeah, I'm very diverse. Yes, I, I think that's the way to go, too. That, this is something that I, that I have to stress out a zillion times to people. It's like, uh, you know, if you want to belong to a certain group, that's fine. But that certain group will always give you these boundaries, you know. If you go out of these boundaries, you don't belong in that group. You know, this is something, you know, with the death metal. If you are a death metal fan, you cannot listen to Nightwish, for example. That's or so Evanescence, or, or whatever these bands are called. You can't listen to that because then you're a poser or, you know, whatever. But I think that, you know, to broaden your horizon and to listen to whatever you want to listen, because you are a unique person. Exactly. Yeah. Can be limited. Yeah. That's so stupid. Uh, some people are very close minded when it comes to music. And I think it's stupid because metal heads should all be united. And because it's a lesser group than the mainstream music, you know, pop, RB, you know, we should all accept each other. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely, you know, and I, <clears throat> I've mentioned a couple of times, you know, and, and, you know, maybe it's a little bit accepted that I like. I, I like the jazz fusion music a lot, mm -hmm. but I also like dance. I like I like EDM. I like all these hard styles. I like all kinds of music, you know, but you can't say that because, oh, then you're not death metal. But I don't care. I really don't care. It's just it's just me. And as long as I produce music that people love and yeah. love to buy, that's what it, that's what it's all about. Right. But I'm so much more than that. You can't expect me, you know, to to be at night and go to a, to, to a cemetery and dig up graves. Come on, <laughs> man. you know, just, I, I'm just a normal, very normal guy. And I just want to be known to be a normal guy, not be crazy, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. There's nothing wrong with listening to other kind of music. Uh, good music is good music, right? Exactly, exactly, yeah. Very That's good. That's genre. Exactly. Yes. And do you still do sports every day? Um, yes, of course. You know, when it was uh, when it was uh, when we were in the lockdown uh, period, of course, the the gyms were closed. Now they're finally opening up again. And I'm very happy because even though I have a, a, a small, a small gym at home, uh, it's still not the same. You know, I, I need I need to go through that ritual in getting ready. Um, get my shake and then go to the gym and just be an animal for one and a half hours and then go back home and relax. This is my, my, my ritual. So now the ritual is gone and then I have to find out, you know, do some exercises at home with my dumbbells or whatever. It's just not the same. So finally, you know, they're open again and, um, I get to go maybe three times a week now, um, you know, so it's better than nothing. And and luckily, because I was getting a little bit fat, which is something that I don't like a lot. Okay. <laughs> I was getting I was getting a, a tummy, you know, and I was getting a little bit too much 
fat percentage. So I had to get rid of this. So I'm I'm working on it to be become you know lean and mean again. Yeah. Okay, great. I really like uh, the painting, by the way, behind you, the canvas. Oh, that, that's like uh, that, I don't think it's a painting. It's like uh, it's like a picture from oh. the, the guy from the tattoo uh, store. He he gave it to me as a gift. It's huge. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's really big. Look. Yeah, it's so great. Yeah, I saw it once on a post of uh, on your Facebook, but now I see it in like real life. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. huge. Yeah. And of course, I, I will get the comments. Oh, well, why are you so being so narcissistic about everything? Because I have a poster of myself. No, no. I'm a <laughs> no you're proud of uh, your stuff, right? I also uh, have posters of myself in my room, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I'm modeling. So yeah, yeah. The the thing the thing is, is that you know, uh, b before being able to before being able to love somebody. You have to love yourself, right? Exactly. Without being without being crazy about yourself, looking in the mirror all the time, and oh, this and that. No, it's just like the self respect and the self discipline is very important, and, and this goes within every realm of life. I think, uh, which is everybody. Uh, every, you know, everybody is 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 special. Everybody is his own person and needs to be respected. So, <laughs> you know, and this is a is a very simple given. And I think that you know, um, um, with with this uh, with this pandemic, whatever, um, I think uh, a lot of bad things came out also with people. Uh, you know, the the bad side of humanity just came out right there. You know, you see you see what is happening to people around you. Nobody's smiling anymore. Everybody is uh, social distancing. You know, like everybody is sick and stuff like that. You know. This so this 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 is kind of weird, you know, because then you lose yourself again into the whole the whole thing of what's happening. You know, you have to stay true to yourself and you know be happy with your own situation, and then try to help other people becoming a little bit more positive. Yeah, you know, yeah. So yeah, I have to uh, bring this one up, uh, this legendary CD, uh, old school death metal classic. And uh, this was the first original album cover. And then without permission of you guys, they changed it into this. How do you feel now about the cover? Because I know you felt bad about it back then. Well, uh, I think it's the other way around. The one that you're holding right now, the other, no, no. Hold up. no, yeah. So this one is the cover that that the uh, record label found out for us. They, 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 yeah. So and, and and it was just like okay, they didn't they didn't even you know communicate with us. They just it was on the market, and I was like, wow, you know, you, you don't even tell the band what album cover they're going to get. So uh, this is this was the first. How do you call that? That was the first um, little break of the band with the label because I think that the, you can't you can't take away the band's artistic freedom. And I do understand now that that that, that album cover cover is legendary because everybody knows this album cover, right? So yeah. I guess so I guess they have done something right, but. Um, uh, let's say this. Uh, the, it's kind of the song out of the body. It's about spiders. It's not about ants. So what do ants have to do anything with this, right? So um, they didn't want to have our. Um, they didn't want to have our cover, and but they didn't say that they're not going to use it. They just use the other green one, and then um, very much later when Hammerheart um, talked to me about re-releasing. Uh, I say, well, we can do that, but I, I want the the original cover to be there as well, just to have people understand that where we came from at that time, because consuming impulse uh, on 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 that picture, you see everybody's eating each other, uh, which has nothing to do with zombies, but it it has to do with with the, the modern day society where it's it's just all about consumption, and it's it's yeah, and it's it's not about you know, um, preserving preserving nature. It's all about consumption, you know. And this goes back 
to uh, 89 or 88, but it's still happening now that we are living in a total world of consumption where uh, not only digitally, but you know, also like for example, the meat production. Don't get me wrong; I I love to eat meat, but the the the, the meat production is really wrong. The the way they they go about to do this is is terrible. I think it's really bad. You know, there's more animals being slaughtered than there is consumption. So yeah. this is ridiculous, right? But the consumption is something that is there and it's like it's almost like it's it's being done with the people that love the greed and the money to the most of everybody else you know again you see this is happening now with the technocratic society where we are living in right now i uh, just like one little example is that i remember when you go out to dinner with somebody you love it, it's a romantic dinner you look in each other's eyes like we do right now and then you have a good conversation. But when I see people sitting now together, everybody's yeah. watching their, their fucking phone, right? And nobody's talking anymore. And and this is something that is like clearly stated um, with, within the new album, um, lyrically. It, it's that, you know, we have to go back to our true self and really find out what, what really matters to us without politicizing because of course i'm very critical about covid-19 i'm very critical about the vaccines and i'm very crit critical about human indoctrination as such as mass hypnosis right but you know without trying to be too political i think it's it, it, we have to go back to nature in a way that we have to refine ourselves our true selves and try to make uh, try to become a better person and then you can reflect it to everybody else you know and and this doesn't help just looking at your smartphone all the time i know this this little example is when my kids visit me and we're in the same living room and my son apps me he's sitting right next to me apps him, okay when are we going to eat i'm hungry i say dude i'm i'm sitting right next to you you can you can ask me i'm right here <laughs> really? Um... Yeah. So this is this is the, the this is the the the, the generation that, that is growing up, and and we have to make sure that we tell them everything about <laughs> human, yeah, you know, human interaction and stuff like that. It's crazy. Exactly. The world gets more digital uh, with each day, and especially with kids, uh, that's even worse. They should play outside. I remember when I was climbing trees. Yeah, exactly. Right? You know, I don't know if you climb I don't know if you climb trees, but I couldn't. I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't? <laughs> no, I'm not so strong. I'm a tiny girl. Yeah, well, you know, the, I, I would know because, you know, every time there's something, uh, something is happening, you know, I don't get to meet you, right? Every time <laughs> something happens, I don't get, I, I really want to meet you in person. At, at one point, it's going to happen, so make sure you're going to give me a big hug. With yes, no, no one and a half meter social distancing, please. No, 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 we're going to hug, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, we kind of meet now, each other, yeah, online. Yeah. First I mean, that's a, yeah. that's a good thing about, you know, uh, doing, doing, then the tech, Technology, I guess, is fine if you if you're doing it in this way. It's not such a problem. If your loved one lives in another country, far away, you can at least talk and see each other, that, which is nice. But there, there is nothing better than um, human interaction just in real life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, and th and this is something that I feel really bad for, not just pestilence, but for all musicians and for all people that love uh, that love um, live music which is such a great um, experience, really. Don't you think it's, it's when people come together and you all enjoy the music that you, that you love and listen to, and the, the human interaction is it's just something that is very much, much needed, I think. We have to really go back to this. Yes, totally, yeah. Yeah, to go back to the consumer impulse, how do you look back on this classic now, on the CD in general? Well, um, it's not a, again. It's not a big secret um, that I never look back at something that I've done in the past. Okay. Uh, because I, 
yeah, because I think I see it as um, looking at the um, looking at a at, at um, um, how do you call it? Photo book, like a photo album, right? Yeah. When you look at a photo album from the past, you can look at yourself like, wow, I got crazy hair or, uh, you know, it just gives you a, a certain feeling, right? Oh, I was fat there. Oh, look who I'm next standing next to. Oh, look at mom or something that makes you feel happy. So um, this is for me like, a, you know, a trip down memory lane, memory lane. But for me as a musician, I know I have to play these songs live. But then why do I have to make new albums? if I'm only having to play these old songs live. So I want to have a nice mixture and not feel like a jukebox where you can put some money in and I'll play, play all the old tunes that you love. So that was the best that we could do at that certain time. And then after that, there came testimony and everybody loved testimony. And then came spheres, nobody loves spheres. And then we came back after, <laughs> then we came back after 20 years and we did resurrection. So every, a uh, moment in time is special for that moment. But like I said, I never I never look back. I never look at old photo albums because I'm more interested in the now and what I can do now to become a better musician, a better person, and yeah. understanding my environment, I guess. Yeah, makes sense. And around these old times you toured with uh, Dad, so yeah, I have to ask, how was the singer of that, uh, Chuck? Um, interesting. Yeah? Yes, uh, and I mean, an interesting guy, and I have to give him props um, um, for being one of the first um, pioneers of, of this extreme music. Um, I know that Jeff Becerra from Possess was even before him, so I have to really call Jeff uh, the godfather of death metal. But if you... Talk about Godfather that makes you sound really old, right? So, and and Jeff is still alive, and I think there is something special about you know about people when they are not amongst the living anymore. Then their legacy becomes even bigger, and you have to have respect for 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 this, you know, because uh, Chuck was a was a pioneer. Uh, we toured with them uh, a, a bunch of times. And I must say that, you know, me personally and Chuck, we didn't get along too well. Okay. Uh, and this had to do with um, when Pestilence opened up for them. Um, his lineup was a little bit more static and Pestilence was really energetic. And um, so we get a, a good crowd reaction. And I, I thought he was a little bit jealous of that, of that feeling, you know. So, you know, but not, I can't, I can't help it. I had long hair. We were doing the head spins and all this stuff, so that was really nice. But <clears throat> I learned a lot um, from him uh, uh, business-wise, the way he thinks about record labels and thinks about the business. So we had long conversations about the business side of it, so I could learn a little bit from what he was dealing with and not to fall in the same trap. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah, and I have to ask uh, for the fans, because everyone is always comparing the new songs to the classics, especially in the death metal scene, like we already uh, mentioned. So do you think uh, the new album is more of the old school sound of Pestilence, or is it more of a new, fresh sound? Well, that's a very good question. And, and, and I think I, I'm not going to have a, a, a very good answer to that, because um, for me, it's when I never look back to my old material, it is still my material. So it is a part of me, uh, you know, uh, of my musical skills back then and back now. So I always try to evolve as a musician in, in becoming a better musician and write better songs. Um, and, and in that respect, nothing really has changed that much. I still have, um, um, I still have a, 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 a very, um, I'm very narrow minded maybe, narrow-minded in what I think is good songs. So my song will always have a beginning, a midsection, a bridge, and an ending. This, I think, is the classical approach of making, making music. And I think it's very important to write songs. And this is something that uh, younger bands, I think, have problem with. I don't think it's, it's good to have 30, 40, 50 riffs in one song. And when the song is done, you don't even re remember the first riff, right? So for me, it's very important that you have 
the classical approach so to write songs. So you have to write memorable music. So this is something that I try to preserve. Uh, and and I always look, try to look uh, in the now and, and to the future. So I think this album is more uh, contemporary, um, but it still has the classic you know, I guess the classic pestilence style of, of writing music. So I, I really can't answer your your question that much is that, you know, from the songs that you have heard, uh, obviously it's pestilence, um, but I change my voice all the time. So people like this voice a lot. So I might stick to this voice a little bit longer. Uh, and, and this is always pestilence has been a challenge to the fans always because you never know what the next album is going to be like. I mean, we're not like your um, like your cannibal corpses or your or you know obituaries that yeah. have like the, the same sound and the same song structure all the time. I, I try to you know um, I, I try to top my previous production as well. That's why when I this time when I went into the studio, I left um, Yori Hogeveen. Who's also playing guitars with um, with Rutger in uh, Shinigami? Yeah. Um, uh, you know, do some co-production with me uh, because I know the guy knows his stuff, and so the production production wise, it's very much more modern. Uh, but I guess I keep the personal style true, so it's it's a little bit of both. Yeah, right. I, I, yeah, a nice balance. I could have said this, so it, I wouldn't have to say such a long answer. I could say. A nice balance between the old and the new. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Uh, what can you already tell about the new songs that are coming out? Uh, two of them already been released. Um, well, every song has its own special, special thing going on. So every song uh, has has its own characteristics. Um, um, but the main emphasis is on. Uh, not on speed anymore so much because I have uh, learned for myself from all these years that slower songs do it much better live and I want to perform these songs live so uh, it's more mid-tempo uh, and every song has uh, a nice little wow factor whether it's like keyboards uh, synthesizers or stuff uh, that is happening or something with my voice or something with the solo so every song is a song on its own uh, and and, and but in in the connection with all the songs, um, everything fits nicely together. Okay, and I saw an interview of you of ten years ago, telling that your kids are very musically, and may take over pestilence later and be the second generation of pestilence. How is that now? <laughs> well, maybe I was a little bit too ambitious because. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, my oldest son, uh, Johnny, uh, he plays guitar, so this this is a very good thing. So I'm I'm kind of trying to feed him a little bit of of the the, the music that I listen to, yeah, more the jazz and the fusion, so he understands his instrument a little bit better. Um, but he is um, he's very, uh, you know, besides being talented, but he he likes to get his interest from all kinds of music styles. So. Um, hopefully that's going to be become something that is, you know, whatever, more interesting in, in the future. And my other son, Mauro, he, he, he doesn't play an instrument. Uh, frankly, they, they both understand that daddy is uh, famous, but I don't think they're going to want to become uh, the next pestilence generation. Okay. Uh, my, yeah, John, my son, my son John is more into girls. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, well, maybe later, you never know. You never know, you know, and one can only hope. Uh, but on the other hand, um, I, I don't want him to go through the stuff that I've been through. So um, I think also now the, it, it, the, the market, the musical market is opening up a little bit more where you can uh, become your own producer. You can bring out your own uh, music. Uh, you know, I have my own little label going on, but, you know, uh, you know, through different systems uh, now. So. You don't have to go through the hassle of, um, uh, you know, record companies and stuff like that. Although I'm very happy with Ahonia Records, they they are very they have been very good to me, and also um, they approach me. It's not like I I approach them, which is another cool thing. 
I don't know if that happened before in my career that an, a label approaches me. Uh, most of the time you approach a label and trying to convince them how good you are in your music, you know, and you know, oh, please market my music and this and that, you know, and then they think, ah, no, it's not that good, you know, whatever. But um, they approach me and um, they've done a lot with the promotion already and I'm very happy about everything. Ah, that's a good thing. So yeah, my last question. You have some other projects going on, like a Drone 187, uh, quite different than Pestilence. Uh, can you tell us about those projects? Well, you know, like I said, you know, I, I'm a very musical person and um, I, I don't like to be pinned down with just one style. So if I feel like I have to do something else um, with my creativity, I'll, I'll, I'll do something more into the electronic music, which is drone. I just do something with drone. And then I have I have um, I have uh, Neuromore, where it's a little bit more um, heavy fusion type of music. So when I feel like playing some heavy fusion, I just put it into this. Uh, and then I have I, I have too many projects. I, I was going to do a project uh, with um, um, with uh, art from Sinister on vocals and uh, called Mordschuft, Dutch name and. Uh, uh, but you know, pestilence is like taking so much of my time that I, I I really don't know how to put everything in these twenty four hours because I, I'll be here in my in my little studio for uh, at, until three or four o'clock in the morning. I'm like, oh, maybe I should go to sleep now, you know. So I'm 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 always busy uh, between this and my workouts and eating healthy and sleeping, trying to sleep. Yeah. So yeah. So whenever this comes out, um, I think Drone will be the first to come out uh, because I'm going to release it through my own little label. Um, and then, you know, I, I only will release it digitally so people can pur purchase it, it that way. But my main project is, is Pestilence, of course. You know, I love that band so much. So I have to, I have to continue. I have a few years left in me. I am getting old, so I have to at least produce some more albums really soon yeah nice yeah that's your baby for so long so yeah definitely yes so yeah guys uh check it out there is a testimony of the ancient anniversary tour coming up to europe and the new album coming out of course the 25th of june uh yeah keep an eye on those things and uh, yeah, Patrick, uh, thank you very much for this very nice uh, long interview. Uh, I'm with... sorry. <laughs> no, sorry. it's very good. No, it's very good with long, uh, good explanations of everything. So thank you very much. You're welcome. And, yeah, one thing I always ask at the end, uh, Patrick, uh, can we take a picture together for the thumbnail of the video? Yeah, how, how are we going to do that? Uh, yeah, I think with the metal horns. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Like this? Yeah. All yeah. right. All right, great. Yeah, thank you uh, very much and uh, enjoy the rest of the sunny day here in the Netherlands. Same to you. And I'm going to take this one off because it's too hot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, me too. I'm going to switch it to a uh, tank top. Uh, <laughs> yes. Good girl. <laughs> Yeah, for the people who want to buy this shirt also, you can get it at the Rockmark Merch Europe. Yes, they'll love that. I love that shirt. And the new one is coming out via uh, Rockmark as well. Oh. Uh, with the new logo, it's all over t-shirt. It's going to be a blast. I've seen the mock-ups and uh, it's going to be uh, an awesome t-shirt. So I might hook you up with one. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I love this all over t-shirt. It's uh, amazing. It really Good. fits with music, you know, extreme uh, shirt with extreme metal. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> what's your what's your size? Uh, it's a small. Oh, small. I'll get you a small then. Ah, thank you so much. That's really awesome. sweet. Cool. <laughs> I'll talk to you later and uh, yeah, thanks. Okay, bye bye. <laughs> okay, bye bye. Bye.